In this video, we're going to be talking about deep fakes. I'm not just going to be talking about this for entertainment purposes, although deep fakes are, are pretty entertaining, but also for the future, thinking about things. This is kind of an exercise in philosophy, thinking about how things are going to change in the future and how futile it is to resist changes that are inevitable. I'm John from BulldogMindset.com on this channel. I teach you how to be a man. I teach you how to build financial independence, how to get the physique that you want, how to get the girls you want, and how to go from the victim mindset to what I call the bulldog mindset. If you want to become a bulldog and develop that bulldog mindset, join us. Click that subscribe button. I'm going to start off by showing you something that's kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool. So it is kind of cool. All right. <laughs> this is a video of Bill Hater impersonating Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm four and a half father. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get out of here. Get out of this at the bombing day. Get out. Now, the first time I saw this video, I I actually didn't know what deep fake was. And I just saw this and I thought, that's kind of interesting. That's like he his face really did look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like I didn't it didn't process in my mind right away. And then I realized, you know, obviously that something was up, that there was obviously some kind of CGI or, or thing going on here. So this is what a deep fake is. It's kind of interesting. So these are computer generated, there's an algorithm, right, using machine learning, okay, to basically put someone else's face on someone else's body and to match their expressions. This is just insanely bizarre. This is where we are with technology and science, okay? And this is just the beginning of it, okay? This is artificial intelligence, this is machine learning, this is neural networks, this is this is basically the future, okay? So l let's look at this a little bit more. You know, we can look at some, some deep fakes. And I wanna talk about some of the, you know, you can look up like deep fake, obviously, and you can find a lot of stuff here. Okay, and some of this is manual, right? I mean, but these are, are pretty pretty crazy. I mean, if you look at the Wikipedia article, or actually, so they've got deep fake tech is being used to create fictitious faces, right? So you can actually create fake faces. But there's a lot of interesting stuff that people have been doing with uh, with deep fake. Uh, you know, just it's insane, right? What what you can do with this? Let's look at some images here. Okay. So yeah, so you know this one that we saw, okay, and then you know some, uh, you know, images here, right? So okay, so you know you can look at some of these and you can kind of see how these things are are being uh, being done and how crazy this is, right? And you can find plenty of examples. There's Nicolas Cage on, you know, and there's some of them are good and some of them are are bad, okay? Some of them are really really good though. Any technology that's ever created, yeah. you guys know what it's going to be used for, which is porn. So, of course, there is a lot of deep fake porn out there. In fact, there was this news article that came out where people were, some actresses that had been, had their face <laughs> deep faked on some, some porn were getting pissed off and basically saying that they didn't have a right to it. The whole, the creator of this application that would allow you to, actually, there was some software that allowed you to remove the clothing from women from whoever you wanted basically algorithmically and and show you their their titties okay so <laughs> kind of funny but there was this whole outrage that happened about this about oh this isn't right oh you know this is a violation this is like rape this is like whatever and I had to laugh at this because I think it's I think it's really interesting for a couple of reasons you don't really own your image Okay, people seem to think, again, you know, a lot of you are going to disagree with me because you're on the side of protecting your data. And I get it. I get it. You think your data belongs to you. It doesn't. Okay, what's in your head belongs to you. Your body belongs to you. Your property belongs to you. Stuff about you does not belong to you. Okay, if, if someone is able to capture information about you, it does not belong to you. Right, this is something that, as a society, we need to start understanding. And... You can say, no, John, it does belong to you. My information, my personal information belongs to me. You know, how would you like it if, if all of your personal information was out there and some companies were using it and, and whatnot? And it's, and it's happening, okay? But my answer is this, okay? And, and you're seeing this even just now, like, you know, I'm getting these robocalls from China, okay? I 
I just can't do shit about it. <laughs> I can't do shit about it. It's coming from different from different phone numbers. Okay. Now, technically, you could say, "Well, this is my phone. This is my phone number. Fuck you guys." But what can I do? What can I do? I can't report them. They're coming from China, and they're using some different random 800 numbers every single time. I can block them. I can screen my calls. My phone number, that data, okay, it got out there, and it has to get out there. I mean, I'm giving my phone number to people. I'm going to give out my phone number, okay, and now it doesn't belong to me. It never did belong to me, okay? So data doesn't belong to you. Data about you doesn't belong to you, all right? It belongs to whoever discovers it. Okay, and it doesn't really belong to anyone. It's just it just is data. It's just like facts. Okay, it's just information. This is the direction that technology is going. You can't stop this. You can't. This is Pandora's box. It's open. You can't put it back. You can't stuff Pandora back in the box. Okay, you can't stuff the stuff that came out of Pandora's box back in the box. Okay, it's unleashed on the world. This technology is only going to evolve and get better. Okay, we live in a society today where we have cameras everywhere where everyone has a camera in their pocket, a cell phone to record things, okay? You should assume that the moment you walk outside of your door that your life is recorded, okay? You should assume even in the privacy of your home that there is the technology, sufficient technology to record you through your walls, okay? You should assume every time you go into an Airbnb or a VRBO and rent it out that you're being recorded naked on the toilet taking a shit. Okay, because the technology to do that is so small and the technology is getting so much better and it's so easy that you should just assume that's what's going on. Now, back to the deep fakes, it's the same exact thing with deep fakes. This technology, no one probably saw this coming, probably thought the reason why this is so surprising was because all of a sudden, bam, we're putting faces on, on other people. All of a sudden, Bill Hader is is having Arnold Schwarzenegger's face and you're like, what the fuck am I watching? And this is algorithmically happening. Someone didn't have to go frame by frame and change it. Not that they even could. They couldn't even do that, okay? And now you can basically not trust video. I mean, sure, video experts at this point can, detel can detect that the video's been altered. But in the future, voice, face, video, you're not gonna be able to use that as evidence in court anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is so critical to understand. Not only are you not gonna be able to use this as evidence in court, but it's gonna be everywhere. That this technology is only going to, you can't put it back in the box. Like it's only going to improve. So to get outraged about this, to, to try and stop this, okay, is ridiculous because you're fighting the inevitable. It is ultimately what the future holds for us. It is going to be like this. And, and I want you to just think about this future. I mean, think this is some interesting shit here. I right? just, just think about what happens when you can put anyone's face in video doing anything that you want. You can modify a video. Okay. And no one can detect it and you can change and you can add voice, right? You can all of a sudden recordings, right? Video, audio, all of that stuff becomes not admissible in court. It doesn't mean anything. Okay, you see a picture of of someone doing something. It doesn't. It could be completely doctored. It could be completely doctored, and you would not know it. Anyone can can make something. Can make this. Can make these porn out of these out of these images. Right. It's 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 ridiculous to fight this. It's ridiculous to get outraged by this. Okay, because you can't stop it. Right. And when you have something that you can't stop, you have to learn how to deal with it. Again, this is going back to that stoic principle and that that stoic philosophy of guarding yourself against fate, right? You know what the outcome is, okay? I mean, uh, do you really think that this technology is going to stop, that there's some way to halt this, to say, okay, you know what? No more are we going to part put artificial celebrity faces onto porn star bodies. That's just, no, it's not. We're not gonna, we're not gonna write algorithms to undress people anymore. No, the technology has already advanced to that point enough people have it they know it's possible okay that it will continue to advance and it will continue to get better and better